Hollywood. The Jack Benny Program. Get a load of this attic. What a mess. You know, for years I've been saving stuff that I'll never use. Yeah, but boss, a lot of people do this. I know, and it's ridiculous. Well, look, we came up here to clean out the attic, so let's do it. Let's get right to work. Oh, okay. Now, Rochester, look at all the stuff that I want to keep, you know, that I want to save, put it right there on the floor. Right, right over there on the floor. And the stuff I want to throw away, we'll put here. Mm. Now, save here, throw away here. Right. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's get going. Let's start looking for some stuff. I don't know about this. Let's see that. Oh, we'll save this. This is a nice picture. Put it up in the bedroom on the wall. Put it over there. Now, yeah, we'll save that. I don't know. Oh, how about that? Yeah, let's see. Oh, let's save that, too. Put it over there. That'll be nice in the, in the hall. <laughs> There's no question about this. No, of course not. Right over there. <laughs> Boss, the back of Zorn's only got three legs. I know, but if I ever get a cow, we can use it for a milking stool. <laughs> Believe me, now, Rochester, look at Put this, we'll throw this away over here, but save that. Save that, that's right. Okay. okay. Now, let's see. Here. Okay. Well, this is no good. A rocker with only one... A rocking chair with only one rocker. We don't need this. I don't think I need this. What do you got there? Four croquet mallets. Croquet mallets? Yeah. And all the handles are broken off. Let's see. Yeah, the handles are off. Eh, get rid of this. <laughs> now you're getting someplace. Yeah. Now, let's see. What else can we... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just thought of something. Hey, wait. Here. Now, hold this. Hold this. There you are. Brand new croquet mount. And you... You are going to get rid of this, this whole back of that chair. Now all you have to do is get rid of the top. That's all. I... Hey. One minute. <laughs> this. Like this. Now let's see. <laughs> hey, this is fine. All right, Rochester, we're going to save this. Come on. Put it over there. Let's save. That's right. Put it right over there. <laughs> now, what are you laughing at? We haven't thrown anything away. We're just shipping cargo. <laughs> Never mind. No. Oh, here, Rochester. Wait a minute. Nah, this is no good. I'll put it over here. I don't want that for anything. And, uh, wait, where are you going with that thing? That's no good. Why? It's better than the ones in my room. Yeah, say it is at that. Well, you can have it then, Rochester. Happy birthday. <laughs> well, Rochester, help me with this phonograph, will you? Oh. Put it right over no. here, see if this isn't... Well, this ain't no good. What do you mean it isn't any good? I know more about phonographs than you do. Oh, it's got a record on it. Well... Can I play it? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Play it if you want it. This is Thomas Alva Edison. I think this experiment of recording the human voice is going to work. I'll call it the gramophone. And thank you, Jack, for lending me the money. <laughs> Boss, when Edison invented the gramophone, 
You're only six years old. How could you lend him the money? I had faith in him. <laughs> oh, brother. How oh, I misjudge Robert Fulton. <laughs> Now, Rochester, throw away these blankets. I know I'll never use these. Hey, hey, what's going on here? Oh, we're just cleaning out the attic down. <laughs> oh, hello, uh, Mr. Wilson. Oh, hello, Rochester. Rochester, throw away these magazines. I think I've read them. Let's see. Yes, throw them away. <laughs> hey, Jack, did you know this was here? Yes, yeah, our family album. Oh. See, most of these pictures were taken when I was just a kid. Oh, who's this fellow here? A relative? No, that's my first violin teacher. May he rest in peace. Hmm, <laughs> and Don, look at, there's a picture of me when I was two years old. Look at me lying on the rug there, hugging a teddy bear. <laughs> Imagine just four years later, he financed Edison. <laughs> financed Edison? It's a long story, Don. <laughs> oh, uh... Jack, isn't this a picture of your sister, Florence? Yes, that's my sister. Oh, yeah, and who's this fellow here? Oh, that's my second violin teacher. May he rest in peace. <laughs> see. Oh, Don, look at this wonderful picture of my graduating class, grammar school, when I was in grammar school. Hey, Jack, that's a fine-looking bunch of kids. Yeah. They... Oh, uh, who's the man in back? That's me. <laughs> Oh, Don, look at There's a picture of my home in Waukegan, Illinois. Oh, Clayton yeah. Clayton Street. With that great big front porch. Yeah. And Don, see that fellow standing over there? That's my third violin teacher. <laughs> Resting in peace? I don't know. He ran away and joined the Foreign Legion. <laughs> oh, say, boy. Yes? I found this box of papers. Shall I throw them away? Wait a minute. Let's see what they are. Well. What's that? Uh, that's my grammar school diploma. And there's my, there's my high school diploma. Let's see what this is. Here. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Here's my application to medical school. Medical school? Yes. You know, I almost went to school to study to become a doctor. My father wanted me to be a surgeon. You a surgeon? Yes, and I'd have been a good one, too. <laughs> well, all I know is, Jack, the last time you used a pen with red ink in it, you fainted. <laughs> Stop. He fainted, fainted, fainted. <laughs> Rochester, look at Put this stuff away with my cro croquet mallets. Well, Jack, you're pretty busy here, so I'm going to run along. Huh? All right, I'll take you down to the door. Oh, good. Rochester, keep working until I get back, will you? Uh, I'll be with you, Don. Oh, look. Here's the collar that used to belong to Carmichael. I could cry. <laughs> I wonder what the boss would be like if he had gone to medical school. Instead of being Mr. Benny, he'd be Dr. Benny. The great surgeon, Dr. Benny. Instead of making people sick, he'd be curing them. <laughs> Dr. Benny, great surgeon. <laughs> Dr. Benny. Dr. Benny wanted his surgery. Dr. Benny wanted his surgery. Dr. Benny, please report to surgery. Thank you. Now go back and get the patient. I would have been here sooner, but uh, we were held up on the freeway. Oh. Have the x-rays come yet? Yes, they're here, Dr. Benny. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, I'll... Let me help you, Doctor. Thank you. I'll scrub up. Uh, Dr. Benny, permit me to introduce myself. 
I am Dr. Van Strunheimer from Vienna, and today it is my privilege to observe while you perform a very delicate operation. No. Well, normally, I, uh, I, I don't like people peeking over my shoulder while I'm operating. Oh, oh, I know, I know. That's why I shaved off my beard. I didn't want to be tickling your neck. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, wait a minute, doctor. There's the, uh, there's the two dollars you won from me. Well, thank you. Um, what, what is this for the bet? Well, he bet me two dollars that I couldn't operate blindfolded. <laughs> you operated blindfolded? Yes, but the patient died. <laughs> well, you, you can't win them all. <laughs> oh, nurse, please. <laughs> it's all right, Doc. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. Well, Dr. Von Schrunheimer, as soon as you finish scrubbing up, you'll have to put on your rubber gloves, you know. Uh, yeah, in just a moment. There we are. Oh, no. <laughs> you were washing your socks? Well, I have to. The university gives me such a small allowance. <laughs> well, look, the underwear will have to wait. This is an emergency. Oh, later with the dainties. <laughs> oh, nurse, will you please bring the rubber gloves for Dr. von Strunheimer and myself? <clears throat> yeah, fine. That's fine. <clears throat> <laughs> Yo. Oh, nurse, after the operation, remind me to cut my nails. Where's my assistant, Dr. Smith? Oh, he's in the other room consulting with the head nurse. Okay, now bring the x-rays. Yes. Dr. Von Schrunheim, follow me. Now, I will put the uh, x-rays on this viewer, you see, and if you will watch carefully, you will learn something about our technique. <laughs> news for you. We got the same technique in Vienna. <laughs> Dr. Smith! <laughs> Dr. Benny, the patient is ready for surgery. Thank you. We'll be right there. Now, Dr. von Schoenheimer, for this particular operation, I think I will make one incision here, oh. and one here, and probably one there, and one there. But, uh, Dr. Benny, don't you think it would be better if you started here? No, well, that might be a little dangerous. I think this would be probably the good How about over in this area? No, no, no. That's entirely away from the... Uh, I think the... maybe if you start down here... No, no, I think this would be much better. There we are. I guess you win. Well, the patient is ready. So follow me, Doctor. Now, Dr. von Strunheimer. Yeah? You will notice that I have a brand new method of putting a patient to sleep. Oh, so? Then very, very... <laughs> Very powerful anesthetic. Uh, All right. I'm ready for the operation. My mask. Please, nurse. Yes, doctor. Not over my eye. I didn't bet today. <laughs> now, doctor, this brain surgery is a very delicate operation. Yeah, so watch carefully. Yeah, I watch. Doctor. Hmm? Doctor, you're operating on the wrong end. Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, I can fix that immediately. <laughs> How do you like that? A lazy Susan. Doctor. Oh, doctor. What is it, nurse? 
I gave you the wrong x-ray. This patient is supposed to have an appendectomy, not a brain operation. Oh, oh. It's all my fault. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, forget it. I mean, anybody can make a mistake. <laughs> Pardon me, Dr. Benny. Mr. Gray is here to see you. Fine. Good, good. good. Well, here you are, Doctor. Here's the $200 I owe you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gray. Uh, uh, what, what is that? Well, you see, his wife had a baby here, and the hospital regulations won't let him take the baby home until he pays the bill. And he finally raised the money. Come on, son. <laughs> what is going on here? I come all the way from Vienna to watch the great Dr. Benny perform an operation. That's what I want to see. In the meantime, my underwear is shrinking in the zinc. That's what I want to see, an operation. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Are the instruments ready? Yes, doctor. Good. Now, put the mask on the patient so we can check on his breathing. Yeah, let's see. Pulse. Normal. Scalpel. Scalpel. Clam. Clam. How are we coming? Fine. I just got through the sheet. <laughs> Nurse, respiration. Respiration normal, doctor. Pulse. Normal. Scalpel. Scalpel. I'm glad I didn't bet on this one. <laughs> Sponge. Sponge. Clamp. Clamp. Nurse, we're going to need some more sponges. I'll get them, doctor. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, the patients expect you to work all the time when they pay you by the hour. It's fun. Yeah. Pulse? 64. Respiration? Fourteen. Scalp. Scalp. Ouch! <laughs> Scalpel is dull. <laughs> Plant. Um. <Ooh. laughs> Sponge. Sponge. Out. Fifty eight. Respiration. Well. Suture. Suture. Nurse, have we got more clamps? Right here, doctor. <laughs> Just remove a little of this tissue here. Sponge. Sponge. Clamp. Clamp. Ooh. <laughs> There, I have just reached the first stage. Congratulations. Thank you.
is Dr. von Strunheimer. The last time I saw him, he was flying back to Vienna. It's a shame he didn't get to see the greatest advancement in medical science. For the first time in history, we blew out an appendix. My hat. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the show. You know, we, we try to be as authentic as we possibly could with this doctor sketch. As a matter of fact, when I knew we were going to do it, I, I went to see a very dear friend of mine, a Dr. Fenchel. And uh, I told him that I was going to do this play, and I asked him if he would mind if I watched him perform a brain operation. See? And he says he didn't at all. So, the next, uh, the next day, I spent the entire day watching him perform this operation. And I must say, he did a brilliant job of, of brain surgery. That is when you consider the fact that Dr. Fenchel is a chiropodist. <laughs> Oh, Jack. Yes, now. Jack, I don't like to interrupt like this, but the program's almost over, so I'm sure you won't mind. Jack, I want you to meet Mr. Harrison. Oh, uh, how do you do, Mr. Harrison? As you know, Jack, every year various national magazines give awards for the best comedy program and the best comedian. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. I know. And uh, Mr. Harrison has an award for you, Jack. Oh, really? I'd like to read it to you. <laughs> right ahead. To Jack Benny, a performer who throughout the years has delighted us with his talent whose inimitable, unique, and sophisticated style of comedy has brought mirth and laughter to millions throughout the land. We award this plaque as the outstanding television comedian of all time. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's really very flattering. Now, if I can just get a magazine to go along with it. <laughs> what? I was even turned down by the Farmer's Almanac. Get out! can you bring a guy like that in here without checking? Where'd you find a crazy man like that? Jack, he's the man your chiropodist performed the brain operation on. <laughs> Ow, and take this with you. This has been a J&M production, and this is Don Wilson saying good night.